Um, what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. And then we've got a new operation that we'll talk about uh, definitely not today, tomorrow. Okay, let's look at number five. We're adding h and g, but then we've got this x minus 2 thing going on. Okay, this is the same thing. This is like a combination of number 1 and number 3. Okay, we're going to plug this expression in. x minus 2, we're going to look at that just like it was a number, like 6 from top to 1. We're going to plug that in everywhere we see x, and then we're going to add the two functions together. So let's do that. Let's do h of x minus 2. So what that looks like is just like if we were plugging in 6, we're going to plug in x minus 2. So we replace the x in the equation with x minus 2. So let's work that out. We need to distribute the 2 to x minus 4. And then we need to combine the negative 4 and negative 2, so that's 2x minus 6. That is h of x minus 2. Now, g of x minus 2 is going to take a little bit more work. Because we replace the x with x minus 2. So it was x cubed, so now it's x minus 2 cubed. Minus 4 times x minus 2 squared. Everywhere you see an x, you replace it with x minus 2. Now, we've got to do a little bit of work to work these out. x minus 2 cubed is not x cubed minus 8. Remember, we've got to write it three times, and we're going to have to multiply it out. And it looks like I'm going to have to I'll fix that in a second. All right, so x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. I'm going to write it all out first, and then I'm going to multiply it. 4 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. Okay, so if you'll remember, when we had three binomials multiplied by each other, we paired the last two together and multiplied those out first. So x minus 2 times x minus 2 is x squared minus 4x plus 4. I went ahead and did the simplifying. And we get the same thing with the last one, minus 4 times x squared minus 4x plus 4. And I need some more space here. Okay, now we've got to distribute the x to everything. So x times x squared is x cubed x times negative 4x is negative 4x squared, x times 4 is 4x, then we distribute the negative 2 to everything, minus 2x squared, negative 2 times negative 4x is positive 8x, negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. I promise not all of them are going to be this intense, okay? And we've got to distribute the negative 4 to everything. Minus 4x squared plus 16x minus 16. All right, we're in the home stretch. We've got to combine like terms. Uh, x cubed, I don't see any more of those, so we just got x cubed. x squared, so we've got a negative 4x squared and negative 2x squared, that gives us negative 6x squared, and another negative 4x squared, so that's negative 10x squared. Put our x's together, 4 plus 8 is 12, plus 16 is 28. And then we've got constants, negative 8 and negative 16 is negative 24. All right, so that was a little intense, but manageable. Break it down a piece at a time. Let's look at number 6. Number 6 isn't quite as bad, okay? I prefer to write, I don't like this notation, but I don't know if they're going to put it on the final exam. I really don't think so, but I don't want there to be any surprises. So I want you to realize that that is g of a squared minus f of a squared. 
Okay, that's what that notation right there truly means. So, in our equation, we everywhere we see a, we're going to replace it with a squared. So, g of a squared is 2 times a squared plus 4. I'm replacing the a with a squared, just like I would replace it with a number. Now, we've got to be careful with this minus sign. Anytime you see a minus between two functions, you need to follow it with a parenthesis because we're going to have to distribute that negative. All right, now, this one, you got to pay attention, okay? I'm replacing the a with a squared, whether it already had a squared on it. So that's a squared squared plus 2 times, and I'm replacing that a with a squared. I think it helps when you replace these things to put parentheses around them, just to show yourself that I've replaced that variable with this other expression. Okay, so 2 times a squared is just 2a squared, and then the plus 4 comes down. Okay, a squared squared power raised to a power we multiply. So a squared squared is a to the 4, and there's a minus in front of it. And then we've got 2a squared there on the end, but we've got to distribute that negative there, so it's minus 2a squared. So my 2a squared is canceled, because I've got 2a squared minus 2a squared. Those are gone. And let's write it in standard form, so that's negative a to the 4 plus 4. Okay, so that's how you evaluate functions at expressions. You're going to replace the variable with the expression just like you would plug a number in. You're just plugging in a different variable instead. Let's look at what we call linear combinations of functions. Okay, 7 through 12 here are what we call linear combinations of functions. So that means that we're combining our functions, but we're also multiplying them by some different numbers. So we've got 3 times h of negative 9 minus g of negative 9. So I think maybe you could have figured this one out. Okay, you're just plugging negative 9 into both of your equations. So let's find h of negative 9. That's negative 4 times negative 9 minus 1. Negative 4 times negative 9 is positive 36. 36 minus 1 is 35. g of negative 9 is negative 9 plus 4, which is negative 5. And then let's do the linear combination of that. It's 3 times my h answer, so 3 times 35, minus my g answer, minus negative 5. Well, subtracting a negative, same as adding a positive. Let's see here, 3 times 35 is five, 105, plus 5, so that's 110. Now, the notation in number 8 tends to throw people for a loop because they think that they're supposed to multiply by negative 1. They see an expression in parentheses and they think they're supposed to multiply by negative 1. So I really encourage you to rewrite that notation. That's 3h of negative 1 minus 4g of negative 1. Okay? Go ahead and rewrite that so you don't think you're multiplying by negative 1 so that it's very clear that you're plugging in negative 1. Okay, you're supposed to plug negative 1 into your functions here. Okay, So, I'm going to handle this just like I did number 7. I'm going to find h of negative 1 first, and g of negative 1, and then I'm going to do the combination part. h of negative 1, negative 1 cubed, minus 5 times negative 1, well, that's negative 1 plus 5, which is 4. And you can totally rely on your calculator for this. Okay, I'm 
I'm just doing it by uh, by hand. G of negative 1, 2 times negative 1 plus 5, that's negative 2 plus 5, which is 3. So, now I'm going to do the combination part. 3 times my H answer, 3 times 4, minus 4 times my G answer, 3, so 12 minus 12, 0. So, whenever you see numbers with your functions like this, your answer should be a number. But then when we look at something like number 9 and 10, we don't have numbers anymore. We've just got our variables, then our answer is going to have variables in it. So, for number 9, we multiply our entire f function by 2. And we subtract, remember I said if you do that subtraction sign, you need to put the function in parentheses following it. Okay, so we've got 2 times n minus 5 minus 4n plus 4 in parentheses. So distribute the 2, 2n minus 10, distribute that negative, minus 4n minus 4. Combine like terms. 2n minus 4n, negative 2n, negative 10 minus 4, negative 14. So these problems look really intimidating, but they're really not that bad. Okay? They look really, really intimidating, but they're, they're really actually not that bad. 2f minus g of t, so 2f of t minus g of t. Okay, I prefer that notation, but I don't know what you may or may not see on the exam, so I just don't want it to be surprised. 2 times my f function, t plus 5, minus parentheses, my g function. That's what trips most people up, so don't distribute the negative. Distribute the 2, 2t two plus 10, distribute the negative minus t squared minus 2t, combine like terms and write it in standard form. So my t, my negative t squared comes first, 2t minus 2t, those go away, and then we've got plus 10 on the end. <coughs> Last two examples here for the day. We're going to put them together, just like we did with the other stuff, okay? Linear combination, add an expression. Now, in this case, I actually prefer to do the linear combination part first and then plug in the expression once at the end. But technically, we can do it either way, so I've got it set up both ways. So let's look at number 11 first. I'm going to do the linear combination part. 3 times g minus 3 times f. So distribute the 3 and the negative 3. 3n squared minus 3n minus 12n minus 3. Simplify if necessary, and it is. 3n squared minus 15n minus 3. Now, that's just the first part. That's just the 3g minus 3f. Now, I'm not multiplying by 4n. I'm plugging 4n into my equation. So I'm actually going to do this. might help you visualize it a little bit better to do it in a different color. So I left my n's out, and I'm replacing them with 4n. And then we need to simplify. We've got to square the 4 and the n. So that's 3 times 16n squared. 15 times 4 is negative 60n. So our final answer for this one is 48n squared minus 60n minus 3. 